Without Googling the answer, what is the significance of the two files above me, the Etsy password and Etsy shadow files? Did you guess something to do with passwords for Etsy password and a place to hide your deepest, darkest secrets for Etsy shadow? If you did, well, you're wrong on both accounts. Etsy password stores information on users and Etsy shadow stores information on passwords. This is B from Tate Talk Tech and today I'm gonna help you get a better understanding of these two files. Stick with me. I've got a favorite ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed, hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like. If you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Make sure you let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end so you get the best understanding. Let's dig in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink my face down. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and start with the Etsy password file. I'm gonna do a tail on that one. All right, and the one we're gonna be using as an example is this one right here, it is gonna be admin user, which is my user. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing a ton of different accounts, and this is the actual only user account that I have on this on this system. The other ones are service accounts. You know, they're gonna be used for a very specific purpose. Like this right here is LXD, which is for Linux containers. This is gonna be associated with those particular, uh, those particular devices. And that's the same thing that's gonna be true with a lot of these other ones like SSHD, we got syslog, those are gonna be associated with syslog and SSH respectively. So let's go ahead and actually talk about what each field means. So this very first field, which is right here, this one is going to be the username of the user. Now in my particular case, it's admin user. Now, one of the things that I do wanna point out is when we're talking about how Linux references individual users. It actually doesn't reference them by the username. It references them by the user ID, which we're gonna do in just a second. Now we have the X, which is right here, which basically just links to the Etsy shadow file, you know, to associate the password with a username. And then the next field is going to be this one right here, which is going to be the user ID field. And again, this is how uh, Linux references this particular user. I reference, you reference it as admin user, they reference it as UID 1000. The, the field next to it is going to be the group ID, which in this particular case is going to be the admin user group because that's the only group that this user is a part of. That and I think the pseudoers group. But this one right here is gonna be their group, the users group. Now the next field is gonna be um, user information. Now this can be stuff that you've set yourself. This could be stuff that you added through the add user command. If you're curious about that command, go check out my previous video. Uh, this can be, you know, attributes about a user. It can be, you know, just miscellaneous information about a user. That's going to really depend on, you know, your particular use case for it. I never update this and I think I've only updated it just to test it but it is something that can be useful to some people. Now, the next field is gonna be the actual home directory of the user. Now, one of the things that I wanna tell you is that even if you don't, even if you didn't create a home directory for your user, it's still going to show this here. So just keep that in mind, just because you see this here does not mean that they actually have a home directory at that location. And then the last field is going to be the uh, the shell, the default shell for that user. Now, keep in mind, there's different types of shells. Two of the most common are bash and then just the regular shell, the default shell, which is for that one, you would just see sh there instead of bash. Now, one of the other things that I want to point out about um, about the uh, about the cell that shell that's being set is you can actually, if you put something else other than like a shell name, like in this particular case, like Ben False, that's going to make it to where they can't log in through the shell. So, and that's done because we wanna make sure that people aren't able to abuse these service accounts and use them for nefarious purposes. Now, you can get more information about the, let me clear this out, and get more information about the uh, Etsy password file by going to man tac s five, and then it's going to be past WT. There we go. And this will actually give you information about the password file. It's going to give you pretty much the same information that I just gave you. But if you want to see it in a written form, there you go. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to the Etsy shadow file. We're going to have to use sudo for this one. All right, perfect. There we go. And again, we're gonna be using admin user. Now you see all these other ones and you're like, oh gosh, those are short. And this one's got this 
super long number that's or you know garbly gook that's on there um we'll get into that in just a minute uh so i'll, I'll explain all of that to you now if we are going through this just um section by section and keep in mind but in both of these files and i'm sorry i didn't kind of lay this out at the beginning is the colons are going to delimit each of the different sections. So the previous file had six sections. This one has a total of nine sections. The uh, final section will actually not be used, not currently used. Uh, so there's nothing really to cover for that one, but the first eight will all have a different purpose for them. Now, let's go ahead and get into these fields here. So this first field is going to be the username field. That's going to be, in this particular case, this is for admin user, but be, again, because of the association with that with the Etsy password file, it's going to associate this with user 1001. I'm sorry, 1000. And then this next field is actually going to be the hashed password. That's why this is so long. And depending on the algorithm used for hashing the password, which is hash is just a one-way function that cannot be undone once it's done. Now, it's going to be different in length. And you can always tell what type of hash it is is going to be based on this right here. Let me show you something here. I've got a list here of the actual uh, hashing algorithms. So if you see a one in between those two dollar signs, that's going to be MD5. If you see 2A, that's going to be Blowfish. If you see 2Y, that's going to be EKS Blowfish. If you see a five there, it's going to be SHA-256. If you see a six there, it's gonna be SHA-512. And if you see a Y there, it's going to be YesCrypt. And just keep in mind that the more complex the algorithm, the further they go down this list. And, and you're not gonna see MD5 really in these files. And if you do, that is a huge security concern. You may see it on like some really, really old system, but I really hope that that system's error gap because MD5 hashes are super easy to break. Um, so just be mindful of that now let's go ahead and go back to our um our output here now this next field is a is an interesting field now this is going to be the this is going to be the date of last password change this one right here one nineteen thousand four hundred seventy one you're like well how is that a date and that's a great question now when Linux is when Linux is doing quite a bit of this stuff, it doesn't do it in terms of an actual date. It's it has a reference date, which is known as the Linux epoch date, which is going to be January the 1st, 1970. Now, this number is going to be the number of days since that date. So, it, you know, if you calculate out, you know, 19,471 days since then, that will be what the date of the last password changes. Now, if you really want to know what the actual date is. I'm going to share this with you. So you can do a sudo and then you can do a pass WD and then you do tech capital S and you would do and you can actually see it right here. This is the actual date of this 19,471. So just wanted to share that as a helpful tip just because the epoch Linux epoch date and these days since then can be just a little bit of a confusing concept. So the next field that we're gonna go ahead and talk about here is going to be this one right here, which is next to it. Now, this one right here is going to be the minimum number of days user is required to wait to change their password. So in this particular case, we can see that there is a zero there. So that means they, can, they don't have to wait any days. Now, this becomes a factor when we're talking about users changing their password frequently. Now, when you're in an enterprise environment, usually there's some there's gonna be criteria for you to maintain a secure password. And you know, you want to you want to make sure that they're not able to just change it once to meet the correct to meet the requirement to change their password, then change it right back. Because that's going to that's going to be a security issue. You know, we want to make sure that, like in that particular environment, they want to make sure that their users are changing their password every, you know, X number of days or, you know, or or something like that. So they want to make sure that if they if they do change their password, they have to wait before they can actually change it again. You know, it's, it's like a rate limiter. Uh, for password changes. All right, so in the next field is going to be the maximum number of days uh, between password changes. Now, so this would be like a field, like if you, um, you know, the, how, how long they can go, um, how long it can be between the password changes. Now, in this particular case, um, we don't, we have 9,900, uh, we have 99,999 days. So really, the, this password does not have to, it's it's not going to reach that maximum number of days between the passwords. Because, you know, if you if you lowered this, it's going to say, hey, 
um, the maximum number of days between the passwords, you know, may, you may actually meet that, but 99,999, you're not going to because that's more than a human lifetime. Now, the next field is going to be this, where the seven is, this is going to be indicating how, like a warning will be given so many days before the password expires. And that's what this date is. And in this particular case, it's set to seven. Now, the next field, the next two fields actually are not set in my particular case, but I still want to go over these two fields. Now, the, this field right here, which would be field seven, is going to be how many days after a password expires before an account is disabled. So, you know, the password expires and then number of days afterwards. So say if you have it, if you have the, the password expires after seven days, and then you add three days, like say the, the number here is three, then it would, it would specify that this account will be disabled three days after the password expires. All right, and then this last field, which would be this one over here, that one is going to be the days before the account will be disabled. So say if you have somebody who is you know temporarily using your system and you want to limit like how long that account will be active just in case they try to, you know, do some funny business and access the account after they are um, after they're done with their stay or, or whatever. This allows you to go ahead and limit that. So woo. That was quite a bit of information and thank you so much for uh, going through it with me. Um, you should now have a better understanding of these two files. Make sure you check out this other video from my channel. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.